Today on Cruise Man's Garage, we're installing these Pathfinder LED high performance driving fog lights for the 2001 to 2010 Honda Goldwing. If you own an older Goldwing between 2001 and 2010, you can easily upgrade your driving fog lights to these new Pathfinder LED lights. I'm going to show you how simple it is to install and it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. In fact, it's much less than what a typical factory set costs from Honda and the performance is outstanding. These lights not only improve your daytime visibility, but when you use them at night, you're going to be blown away by the high performance lighting that these will add to your Goldwing. Let's take a quick look at what comes in your kit. The lamp assemblies are clearly marked left and right to make installation even easier. You'll notice a small screw and spring on one side and that will be used later in the installation to adjust the horizontal beam pattern of the light. The lamp assemblies come pre-assembled on the bracket to make installation quick and easy. And these come in both black and chrome. Today we'll be installing the black model. Once again, these are designed for the 2001 to 2010 Goldwings only. If you need fog lamps for your 2012 and up, check the Pathfinder LED website. Your kit also includes an OEM style fog light switch. Another harness includes a relay and a jumper we'll explain later. Today I'm going to be installing these on a 2005 Goldwing shown here. It's always a good idea to put the bike on the center stand before you do an installation. As you can see, this owner already has fog lights installed, so we're going to remove those first. Just to be safe, it's always a good idea to remove the negative battery cable from your battery. Now the battery is under the left side cover on your motorcycle, so remove that bolt and lift the connector off of that terminal. Whether you already have fog lights installed or not, you're going to need to remove this plastic lower cowl. Now there are three screws on each side that hold this in place. These are five millimeter Allen head bolts and this is the first one we're going to remove down at the bottom and then there are two at the top. Here is the one on the inside and you can see the other one just above it and off to the right. In the center you'll notice these two small black push pin rivets and you basically just grab those with your fingers and pull them out firmly Sometimes they come all the way out, sometimes they'll stay in. It just depends on your bike. Uh, that's what they look like when they're removed. Now here we're going to remove these 5 millimeter bolts on the right hand side of the bike. Uh, this is the outside upper bolt. Then of course we need to remove the inner upper bolt. When you remove the bolts, take note that the bolts are different sizes. Two of the bolts are the same, like the one on the left. The one on the right that has the taller shoulder goes in the upper outside hole. Now, let's remove the last bolt, the lower one on the right hand side. You should now be able to remove the lower cowl as shown. Make sure to pull out that piece at the top to get the flange to come loose and then just set it straight down and fold it under the bike like that and then pull it out. If your Goldwing has never had fog or driving lights installed, you're going to need to remove these plastic inserts in the lower cowl. Now, this section will show you how to do that if you already have driving lights installed, you can skip this section. Now I'm demonstrating this on a 2012 Goldwing that has rectangular 
inserts, but the procedure is the same. You can use a Dremel tool to cut those little tabs off, or you could even use wire cutters or tin snips or a small hacksaw blade. And then I'm going to use a file to file down those plastic nubs to get them a little bit smoother, just so it looks nicer. And once you're finished, it should look pretty smooth like this. If you currently have fog lights installed, they'll have to be removed first. And generally, they're held in place with three bolts or screws. In this case, these are 8 millimeter bolts. Now, you'll notice one on top, one on the bottom, and then there's one out of frame that you can't see that's on the inside. There's also a plastic cable guard that will come off when you remove these bolts. After you've removed all the bolts, follow the wire down to the plastic connector and disconnect it. So with the old fog lights removed, now you can see the three threaded bolt holes in the engine case that we're going to use to mount our new fog or driving lights. There's that plastic connector I was referring to earlier that goes to the bike's wiring harness. Now I'm going to remove the existing fog lamp on the left side of the bike, removing the same three bolts. If you do not currently have fog or driving lights installed, you'll see this plastic cable guard is attached to the front of the engine, and this must be removed. So we need to remove the two 8mm bolts that hold it in place. And you can do this with an 8mm socket or a wrench. Let's take a look at the mounting hardware that comes in your kit. You have one 20 millimeter long spacer, two 16 millimeter spacers, one 4 millimeter spacer, three 50 millimeter bolts, three 35 millimeter bolts, and six flat washers. I'm going to start by installing the left side fog lamp. Here you can see the three mounting holes that we're going to use to mount the fog lamp assembly. I'm going to use a piece of gaffer tape just to hold this plastic cable guard in place because it mounts underneath the fog light assembly. So I'm just using a little piece of tape here just to kind of hold it in place. It makes it easier than trying to hold all these parts at the same time. After checking to make sure we have the correct assembly for the left side of the motorcycle, take note of this hole in the mounting bracket. That goes on the inside toward the middle of the engine. And we're going to start by installing the inside bolt first. Now I'm going to use one of those 16 millimeter spacers along with a 50 millimeter screw. Notice that I have the flat washer installed under the screw head. And we're going to install that center or inside bolt first. It's not necessary to completely tighten this bolt at this point in time because we're going to go ahead and get our other two bolts installed along with spacers and washers before we do that. Now the next one we're going to install is the one at the very top. Now on top we're going to use another 50 millimeter bolt with a washer and another 16 millimeter spacer that goes in between the mounting bracket and that plastic guard. Now, to get the washer on the bolt, you have to kind of hold the washer in place like this and then slip that 50 millimeter bolt through it and then put the spacer behind the mounting bracket to get everything to go together. This can be a little fiddly and take a little time, so a little patience may be required here. And once again, there's no need to completely tighten this. We just want it held in place at this point in time. Make sure you're getting this little guard to line up with the hole. And you also want to make sure this drain tube is out of the way. 
and then you just have to kind of hold this spacer in as you fit the bottom screw with the washer all the way through everything. It should be noted that we're using the 20 millimeter spacer here between the bracket and that plastic guard. So the longer spacer goes at the bottom. And once again, as you tighten down this bottom bolt, make sure all of your drain hoses and cables are not getting pinched by that bottom part of the bracket. Once you're comfortable that there's no wires or cables or hoses being pinched, we can go ahead and begin tightening down all three of these mounting screws. And you can also use a 10 millimeter uh, socket to tighten these. I just prefer to use the JIS screwdriver. I think it's easier. Now during installation, I also noticed a couple of the little screws that hold the lamp to the mounting bracket were loose. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten those up while I'm here. I have a pre-production unit, so it's possible that just got overlooked at the factory. But it's a good idea to check to make sure these are tight as well. Of course, now we can remove our gaffer tape. We don't need that anymore. We'll use that on the other side when we get ready to do it. And finally, we're going to connect the new lamp assembly to the wiring harness on the motorcycle. It just clips together. Very easy. There's a little cable stay over here. You see right here. We're going to kind of tuck that up in that little stay just to hold it in place for now. Now the right side assembly mounts pretty much the same way. The only difference is we're only going to use one four millimeter spacer behind the inside bolt, the one that goes on the inside toward the inside of the engine. And again, we're not going to tighten this all the way. Now I've already taped the plastic engine guard down so that it's kind of being held in place. And there are no spacers that go behind the top and the bottom screw. And I should point out that on the right side, we're using the 35 millimeter bolts. The shorter bolts are used on the right side of the motorcycle. And lastly, we'll install the bottom 35 millimeter bolt with the flat washer on top. And now we can go around and tighten all three of these mounting bolts to make sure they're firmly tightened. And don't forget to plug in the electrical connector from the lamp assembly into the motorcycle harness like we did on the other side. This donor bike already had a fog light switch installed. If your bike has a fog light switch already installed, you can skip this section. However, if you don't have a fog light switch installed, there will just be a blank piece of plastic there and we'll need to remove that and install the fog light switch. First, we need to remove this piece of trim that goes down the left side of the top shelter. Use your fingers to gently pull that trim toward the inside of the motorcycle and you'll begin to see some clips uh, release and then start at the bottom and pull up to release the rest of those clips and then the final one in the very top. Open the left glove box door and you'll notice four body clips that hold the glove box in place. To remove the body clips, press in the center with a screwdriver until you hear a click and then just use your fingernail to lift those little body clips out. They come right out. Now you can lift the glove box out. This one has a little power connector inside. I have to kind of work it out. But there is a wire connected to it for that reason and I'm just going to let it hang off to the side for now. 
use a five millimeter Allen wrench to remove the single socket bolt that holds the headlight adjuster and fog light switch panel in place. Now you can simply pull that panel toward the inside of the motorcycle to release a couple of little clips and this whole panel will just lift out. Now there are wires obviously connecting it and you'll notice this box. Now we're going to remove the back panel for this box to give us access to that fog light switch. Now once again I'm going to be demonstrating how to do this using a 2012 Goldwing so things will look a little different but the process is exactly the same. Remove the cable stay. It's just a Phillips screw. Go ahead and remove that and then you can pry open the back and there's some little slots and if you use a flathead screwdriver you can pry off uh, that back piece comes off as shown. Now, by moving the cables out of the way, you can, you can see where there's two little Phillips screws that hold that, I call it a blank, in place. It just is a kind of a placeholder for a switch. You remove those two screws, the blank will come out, and then you simply insert the OEM-style switch in its place and use those same two Phillips screws uh, to hold it in place. Next, you're going to want to locate the connector for the driving lights as shown here. Now, it may be kind of buried down inside the shelter. It's inside of a group or a harness of other wires sometimes, and you'll find that connector. And this is what you're going to connect the wiring harness to. Now, the wiring harness is part of what is connected to the relay. You want to go ahead and plug that into the motorcycle connector that you just found and then the OEM style switch that you earlier mounted uh, into the radio control unit that plugs into the other end of that wiring harness as shown. If you would like for your fog lights to be able to operate while you have your high beams on you can replace the relay with the jumper that's provided and I'm showing how to do that here. You basically remove the relay install this jumper in its place and that will allow your fog lights to stay on when you have on your high beams. Follow the instructions included in the kit to adjust the driving lights. I like to cover the headlights using a large towel just taped to the front end of the bike so that all I'm seeing are the driving lights. Here's the Goldwing low beams only. Now let's turn on the fog driving lights. Wow, look at the difference. It's amazing. Let's turn those off. You can tell a huge difference in the light pattern and the brightness. Look at how much light these driving lights put out with no headlights on. Just the driving lights by themselves are putting out this much light. It's absolutely amazing. Once again, here are the low beams. Let's turn on those driving lights. Wow, look at the difference. I honestly think these are the brightest LED driving lights I've seen for the 2001 to 2010 Honda Goldwing.